how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Happy Pres President's Day. Happy President's Day to you. Thank you for uh, chatting with me today. I appreciate it. Thanks for taking time for your three-day weekend to talk to me about uh, Willie's Wonderland. It's an absolute pleasure. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, I've been a critic for, this is my 26th year as a, as wow. a film critic. Yeah. And this, is a, and this is the first time in maybe 15 years, maybe 20, that I paid for a movie. <laughs> really? Yeah, because I well, talked to the... Well, I was talking to the PR company. Going, send me a screener. Well, we're not sending out screeners. I'm like, so, okay. I go, look, I saw the trailer for this movie. I'm going to pay for this because I want to support it. Because it's like, this is like right up my alley. These weird, kooky kind of cult status films. And it was everything and more, especially Nick Cage. It was everything and more that I hoped my roommates and I, roommates and I watched it last night. And we were just dying. We were just dying. So first, oh, I'm so glad. Oh, right off the top, you, you, you know, as, a, as an actor, this has to be so much fun doing a movie like this. Because, you know, like Killer Clowns from Outer Space, this thing's just going to get cult status as the years go on. Well, it was awesome because Grant Kramer, who was in Killer Clowns from Outer Space, was a producer on this, and he really championed me for the role. And he was such a kind, collaborative person to work with. And yeah, I love that movie too. And I was like, I've got to be a part of this. This seems like so much fun. And it was so cool. I met Grant, was it last, not last October, the year before, at Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios because they had the uh, Killer Clowns uh, house that you went through so he was there uh, the Chiodo brothers were there uh, it, it was just one of the, the highlights of my career to meet those guys on the red carpet then to go in after them in the killer clowns right. haunted house it was really cool so uh, cool. now of course we got to talk about Nicolas Cage who I yeah. love to say he's a Las Vegas resident now um, no dialogue and you had a scene with him where you had to tie him up I did have to tie him up so I had these this pair of zip ties that I had to zip tie him with and you know, he's he's not saying anything, but he's still so intense, so scary in the moment. And it's, you know, from my childhood, you're tied up Cameron Poe from uh, Con Air. So, you know, this is a bad man. You don't want to mess with this guy. But working with Nicolas Cage is, one, it's surreal because he's just so cool and he's such a nice guy and he's so friendly and collaborative. And if you have an idea for the scene, he, he takes in all ideas. And like you said, he doesn't say a word in the film. So everything is emoting through the eyes. He's, he's making some amazing choices that I couldn't do anything but watch and sort of say, oh, what can I steal from one of the greats? Yeah, it was about 20 minutes of the movie, we were like talking like, he's not saying anything. I go, is he going to go through this entire film without saying an entire word, like a silent movie? And then we thought at the very end, he would say something, you know, to Emily, you know, and no, it didn't happen. And then nope. we're watching the closing credits and his character is the janitor. The janitor. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I had so many friends text me over the weekend saying they watched the movie like, he doesn't say a word. He doesn't say anything in this movie. And I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. Which is more difficult than it sounds, right? So much more difficult. Less lines to learn, but then you have to create all those moments yourself. So obviously the script was fantastic and, you know, the beats were written into it, but he had to come up with everything that he was doing. And your character, you're a deputy sheriff and you don't understand why you're just hanging out I, I don't know if you were a deputy sheriff. It looked like you were state police. You had a different uniform. Right. Well, I was deputy sheriff Evan Olson, and I was brought in from the, the local sheriff of Hayesville, uh, who's played um, remarkably by uh, Beth Grant, who's just wonderful. She and I became so close on, on set, and we, we've hung out afterwards. She's invited me over to her house. I'm friendly with her husband, Michael, and her daughter, Mary, and we've done play reading. So we had an amazing time on this film working together. But so her character, the sheriff, who may know a little more than she's letting on about what's going on in this town, she brings me in uh, for the evening. And I think it's just going to be a quiet night as a backup, and then all hell breaks loose. And she's like, we don't want that phone to ring. <laughs> no. And unfortunately, it rings. <laughs> well, I would hope so, because then we have the best part of the movie happens. For sure. Um, Let's talk about Emily Tosta. I mean, she's she was great as the heroine, as the one that uh, as the as a I like to call the Sigourney Weaver type character. You know, she's 100%. yeah. She, it's even though some of her friends when they go to destroy this place because you know it's possessed or whatever you want to talk about. Uh, I just feel that you know some of her friends. You just like oh cool, some senseless deaths are coming now because you just can pick off these characters. You're like oh this one's gonna go the the couple that go have sex in another room's gonna go. You know so. I was so happy to see that we had some senseless deaths happening in this movie too. Well, I don't think it'd be classic horror if there weren't some senseless deaths for sure. But yeah, that was great. Emily Tosa, she's such a powerhouse just in general, but in this movie, I think she does such a wonderful job and we got to hang out a lot and we went out to dinner after one of our scenes and, you know, I, I have to yell at her at one scene. It's hard because she's just such a lovely, lovely person. And 
in a lot of ways, her character is right. So I, I, I have to sort of come to grips as well. But working with her was a dream come true. I, I think one of the stars of the films, of course, are all the different characters. So tell me about the first time you saw Willie and, and all those different characters in person, because they, they look so cool. They are awesome. So I got to walk in and see all the animatronics and, and work with the people who are inside them, the, the wonderful performers. And there, it's all real. What you're seeing is real and there. It's not CGI. And uh, I won't. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen the film yet. But I, I have a special relationship with uh, Tito the turtle. I'll just put it that way. So. Oh, CC. <laughs> I guess. Well, I was going to ask you what your favorite character was, but I guess it's Tito. I love Gus the gorilla. That's my favorite. I don't know if Tito's my favorite. I think. I think uh, you know, uh, Siren Sarah is probably my favorite. She's probably the creepiest. Yeah, creepiest, the creepiest. for sure. So yeah. She was like a like an overgrown Tinkerbell. It was really creepy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what about the director? Tell me about Ken Lewis. What was his style like? So Kevin was a fantastic director to work with. While we were on set, you know, we, we stuck to the script pretty, pretty well. And we went through it. And once we had the scene, that's when Kevin would sort of go, okay, we've got it. Now let's just play. We know what the scene's about. Let's improvise a little bit. So we improvised some. One night he came, he said, look, I was up all night. I couldn't get to sleep. And I kept thinking, and he sort of had rewritten a monologue that he wanted Emily and I to do in well, her to do a monologue and me to, to respond to while we were in the car together. So we, we tried that out. We just tried a lot of different things and he was so open to collaboration and ideas. And, you know, there, I think my opening scene in the movie is when I'm uh, annoying Beth Grant's sheriff character. And he said, let's just come up with stuff uh, to annoy her. David, go for it. So he just <laughs> let me do as many annoying things as I could come up with. <laughs> And uh, it looked like it was a really cold shoot because definitely in your scene with the police car when Tito attacks and all of that, there's a point where when everything's done, uh, you see, I think it's Tito, I think you see his breath still coming, yeah. <laughs> coming out. It looked like a cold shoot for this movie. So it, most of the shoot was decent. That la that was one of their last nights of our shooting was, or for me at least, was, the, was my scene with Tito. And it was one of the coldest nights I've ever experienced. <laughs> so This is Atlanta, right? This is in Georgia? Yeah. It was in Georgia in February, so it was almost a year ago now. So it was, uh, yeah, right at the end of February, and it was freezing. So we were, we, you could see our breaths. There, there was a point where I had to lay on the ground, and it was like, all right, don't breathe, don't breathe, because everyone's gonna see your breath. So I did, yeah. but it was cool. Hey, I loved it. And what was that? What was he drinking the whole time? Was it punch soda, or was it an energy drink, or what was it? He was drinking. I think it was his own special soda that no one else could drink, and he took his uh, breaks from working very, very seriously. <laughs> he had to be union. That's what I kept thinking. Yeah, exactly. He was union. <laughs> he was a janitor, but he was a union janitor for sure. And do you like the comparison to Killer Clowns? Because that's the first thing I thought of. I love the comparison to Killer Clowns. I think that's what we were going for. I know Grant was going for that as well. He wanted it to harken back. We definitely want this to be a cult classic as soon as possible now so it's and i think i think we're getting there for sure it's had a lot of views over the weekend and since we're still in uh, the long weekend i think there's a lot more people who can watch it we we hope they do well just make sure you tell the production company that 20 dollars of that revenue was contributed by me very very wholeheartedly i'll, I'll write it down jeffrey howard two f's <laughs> two f's and jeff yes <laughs> yeah, so for sure i understand <laughs> david congratulations what a great time and uh I hope you make another one. I hope there's a sequel of some sorts in the works and uh, and uh, we'll have some more of these great characters. Well, I would love to come back for a sequel. So that would be great. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, man. And enjoy your holiday. And thanks for talking to me. You too, Jeff. Thank you.